<laughs> Welcome to Gutter Trash episode. Uh, let's call this one 227A. It's a filler episode. My name is Eric. Uh, and I am the only one here. Um, today was the first day of space. The small press and comics expo in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, my partner Jason is at that show the whole weekend. Uh, and so that would actually leave us without an episode this week. So I decided to try to put something together here for the listener, uh, to not forget about us. Uh, sort of like, uh, well, not really. Uh, but, uh, back when I did the Horror Hound convention a couple of weeks ago, we put out a filler episode for that. Uh, but I was with, uh, my pal Kurt Dins, uh, and I don't have any pals right now. Uh, everybody has abandoned me and left me alone. Uh, so this is what you're getting instead. Um, so, uh, this is so weird just doing this by myself, but I'm going to do it because, uh, I love myself and I love hearing myself and I love putting myself out there. For the entire world. Uh, I love you. Uh, so, uh, usually I wound up going to space with Jason, and uh, in lieu of an episode, uh, he and I would just talk about our experience there. Uh, but uh, I did not go this year, not as I usually go, uh, which is for the entire weekend. Uh not necessarily selling wares, but uh, just being there, and because uh, usually it's Jason with the books. Uh, that is, uh, space is definitely more of a crowd for that. That is his type, uh, and, and not mine. Uh, it is independent comics. We've talked about it before. Uh, you can go track down any of our old episodes and listen to it. But I'll just give kind of a quick rundown. At least I will hopefully keep it quick. Uh, but it's, it's small press, it's independent stuff, it's do-it-yourself stuff, and a lot of it is mini-comics, uh, auto-bio comics, uh, or just plain, bizarre art comics, uh, and some of it is basically the kind of stuff that you look at and you're like, oh, this got rejected from, you know, a major publisher. Or this person really desperately wants it to be published by a major publisher, and it's just not that good. Uh, it's harsh, but true. Uh, but uh, usually when I go, uh, since I don't really make any comics anymore, I don't have anything to sell, nobody is interested in anything that I had anyway. Uh, nobody there is interested in anything that I draw because it is not my type of crowd, but I'm there to hang out with my friends uh, and, and to support Jason. Uh, so, uh, but I couldn't afford to go this year uh, because I went to the Horror Hound where I had just as much success there as I usually do at a space. And actually, I probably had a little more. Uh, but uh, I decided to actually go to space for a day. Uh, sort of, uh, it was more like two and a half hours. Uh, I went with my friends, uh, Joe Grunenwald and Juliet Frumholt. Uh, Joe, of course, is my co-host on the podcast, The Viewmasters. And, uh, Juliet, uh, actually used to do the, uh, the, uh, announcement, uh, outro to, uh, for about the first 200 episodes or so. Uh, she was actually originally going to be a bigger part of Gutter Trash, uh, but she has, uh, kind of an issue where, uh, that, that I think a lot of artists have, uh, a lot of creative people, is that they commit themselves to way too much stuff, and, uh, she just couldn't get around to doing it. Um, but, uh, you know, she is a, uh, a radio personality. You can find her on, uh, if you're in Ohio. Or Dayton, the Dayton area. You can find her on uh, 91, 91.3 WYSO. Uh, you can find it on uh, WYSO.com, uh, I believe, as well. She is a uh, radio personality, hosts a show called Kaleidoscope. 
so check that out. Uh, it may stream on the web. I uh, should probably do a lot more research. Uh, I am talking a lot. But uh, that's what you get when, uh, when your partner is uh, elsewhere. The guy that you usually uh, bounce things off of and uh, allows you to take a breath and to take a drink. And uh, I'm going to need to take a drink here. So please bear with the silence and the gulping and possibly the belch. Tasty. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my day-to-day at Space, uh, which is honestly not that much. Uh, I didn't do a lot there. Um, we showed up. Uh, like I said, Joe, Juliet, and I drove out there. Uh, we showed up around noon. Uh, walked around a very little bit. Uh, found uh, got a trash listener and pal Brian John Mitchell. Uh, talked to him for a little bit. Hung out with him for a while. Uh, then I found uh, Jason, of course, and uh, talked to him. Hung out with him. Uh, you know, just looked around the show, and, uh, uh, given my financial situation, I couldn't really, uh, buy a lot. I'm sure I would have found something to buy. Uh, the, the show, uh, the, I think some of the big names at the show were, uh, Tom Scioli of, uh, Godland fame. Uh, also did, uh, American Barbarian, which, uh, we reviewed, uh, for Get a Trash, uh, probably about a year ago. Maybe, I, I honestly, I, my, my, experience of time is off so who the fuck knows whenever we reviewed that uh but we reviewed it and we enjoyed it uh nate powell was also there we uh uh reviewed two of his books in the past uh, swallow me whole and uh, any empire uh as always nate powell is a fantastic artist and probably the nicest guy that i have ever met at any convention and i've met some really nice people uh but nate powell is Definitely the tops of that list. Um, let's see. Durf Backdurf was there. He, uh, of course, did the uh, My Friend Dahmer comic, which we reviewed. Uh, basically, a lot of people whose comics we reviewed were there. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, you know, I didn't really talk to any of them. Uh, you know, I just hung out with, with Brian and Jason, because uh, they, they are my friends, and I wanted to see them. Uh, cause it's been, uh, like, like a whole five days since I saw Jason. Uh, but it has been, uh, at least a year, if not more, since I saw Brian John Mitchell. So that was, uh, that was fun. Uh, and I'm glad I got to hang out with both of them. Uh, after the show, uh, well, eh. <laughs> uh, when, uh, when we got there, uh, this is gonna get icky and personal. Uh, probably not. Uh, <clears throat> I told, uh, Joe and Juliet that, uh, I would meet them downstairs, uh, where the show was happening, uh, but because I needed to go potty. Uh, and, uh, at this hotel, uh, there's a, a restroom, uh, down in the area where the show happens, uh, but like most conventions, uh, even a small press expo where you, uh, think people would be a, a little cleaner and neater because they're all uh, pretentious and indie. Uh, they are not. Uh, they are horrible, horrible pigs at conventions, no matter where you go, and the bathrooms are usually disgusting. Uh, usually, uh, w- when I go to space, we-, we have a room right there in the hotel, so I can use that as a home base for, for a restroom trip. Uh, but I also discovered that there is a small restroom uh kind of hidden out of out of sight of the convention uh and i have used that in the past and it is a pleasant experience and yes i am talking about a restroom uh a public restroom uh and the things that i do in it <laughs> so i went to this restroom uh the the this hidden uh, little Fortress of Solitude restroom that I've, I've found. It's near the restaurant, which is usually closed when we're there. Uh, and I walked in and, uh, the fucking thing was flooded. Ooh, there was, uh, about two inches of water. Hopefully water. On the ground in that restroom. 
Uh, and uh, there was absolutely, and it was just the entire room. The entire restroom was just flooded. So uh, there was, I, I couldn't use it. So I had to go use the filth room. And it was fine. Um, so anyway, so I hung out with uh, Jason, I hung out with uh, Brian, and uh, the three of us, uh, Juliet, Joe, and I, uh, decided to call it quits around 2.30, and we left uh, to go get uh, something to eat. Uh, I was hoping, sort of, to find this uh, Mexican restaurant that uh, Brian, Jason, and I had went to the previous year, uh, where we had probably the best Mexican food I have ever had in my entire life. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it's been a year. I have a terrible memory anyway, and we're in a city that I really don't know that well or at all. Uh, and so I decided that, uh, well, we tried to find it, but we quickly got lost and, uh, Juliet and Joe know the area a little bit better than they, uh, have gone to Columbus a few more times than I have. Uh, and so, uh, we, I just sort of, uh, let them do the navigating at that point. Uh, and, uh, as we were driving, we passed a, uh, a fairly well-known comic shop, uh, in Columbus called the Laughing Ogre. Uh, they, uh, I think every city that has a comic shop anyway, usually has, uh, one that is, uh, like, you know, like the big famous comic shop. Uh, like here in Dayton, ours is actually called the Bookery. Uh, it's in Fairborn, Ohio, near, uh, right past, right Pat Air, right Pat Air Force Base. Uh, and it's a nice shop, and I've been there many times. I used to shop there, uh, that was my store when I was like, uh, uh, probably, uh, 12, 13 years old until, uh, one opened right next door to my house, and that was my comic shop. And then when they closed, uh, Mavericks became my comic shop, uh, where our, our friend uh, Jason works currently. Uh, but the Laughing Ogre is, is sort of that store in Columbus. Uh, and none of us had ever been there, and uh, we're, we're all comic nerds. Uh, so uh, we, we decided to stop in there. And it was one of the nicest comic shops I've ever been to. In my entire life, uh, I've been to a few nice ones. Uh, again, the the aforementioned Booker is pretty nice, but it's a little sterile. Uh, but uh, this one was just oh man, it was so well organized. Uh, it it smelled good. Um, just some of the little things that they do, like if uh, a comic sells out, there is a spot on the shelf. Where, where that comic had sat, and you can actually see what book that was that sold out, uh, unlike other comic shops you go to, where, uh, uh, if it's gone, there's just an empty space, and you have no idea what was there. Uh, the graphic novels and trade paperbacks are, eh, not all of them, but uh, a good portion of them, are, uh, organized in alphabet- alphabetical order by name of, uh, the creator, or at least the writer. Uh, which I thought was neat. Uh, they don't do that for, like, the small press stuff, but they, they did do that definitely for, like, you know, uh, your Marvel and your DC stuff. Uh, except for a small section, which was just, uh, uh, Shotgun Blast Vertigo comics. Uh, but still, I mean, it was just, overall, just incredibly well organized. You could find things pretty easily. The back issue selection wasn't great, but I did find a couple of issues of the comic powers that I was looking for. I uh, wound up buying that, and it may be kind of shitty that uh, I went to this small press thing and then came home with uh, three issues of a, a major Marvel comic. And although it is a creator-owned book, but uh, it's also a creator-owned book by arguably the biggest comic book writer that's working for in mainstream comics, uh, basically someone who doesn't need my support, but someone who I am a fan of, uh, whereas I ignored everyone at, uh, space, including my friends. Wah, wah. I'm gonna pause for another drink here. Uh, man, I really wish I had someone to talk to. Hi, did you miss me? <laughs> I didn't either. Um... <laughs> So, so we're at this comic shop, 
uh, Joe bought a, a book for his wife, actually, which was super cool. Uh, his wife is not a huge comic fan. But uh, she wanted to buy this particular book, and it's been out of print, and Joe found a copy there, and so that was awesome. Uh, and I always support someone who isn't necessarily a comic fan who wants to try to get into comics. Uh, you know, there's just something nice about that. Uh, and and more, it's not like she's just doing it to, you know, oh, I support my husband. No, she's doing it because she was interested, and that's awesome. Uh, and then, of course, I bought my, my copies of Powers. Uh, somehow, and I am not entirely sure how this went down, uh, but Joe wound up having a conversation with the, the cashiers, uh, and talked about, uh, this comic shop in Dayton, uh, by the name of Mavericks, <laughs> which, uh, Joe and I used to work at, and Joe and I still shop at, and of course, Jason works there as well. Uh, <laughs> and so, these this one girl knew of Mavericks, and uh, the first thing out of her mouth was, I hate Mavericks. And, uh, well, a fight didn't break out, but uh, it, it was friendly, it was jovial. Uh, but words were exchanged. Um, and, you know, but the thing is that, that Joe and I know, and, I, and, and Mavericks, God love Mavericks, but it's it's not a great store. Uh, and, and there are a few employees who work there who are awful. And I feel perfectly fine saying that without Jason in the room. Uh, cause Jason's not one of them. Jason is great. Uh, and there's, there's a couple people in there who are, who are awesome. But, uh, for the most part, and, uh, this is all magic related, uh, there are some people who are there who are awful. Uh, so yes, I can understand someone walking into Mavericks and being completely off put by that and by the lack of organization and the lack of cleanliness and the weird smell. Uh, it's, it's not a great shop. It could be a great shop. It used to be a great shop, but it is not right now. Uh, this girl also, uh, once talked about, uh, or she talked about how, uh, she loved the comic shop Superfly, which, uh, our friend Juliet was, uh, not a fan of, and so there was uh, some additional words. Again, all in, in sort of camaraderie and, and friendliness, uh, you know, but uh, words were exchanged. Uh, but again, no hard feelings on either side of it. Uh, and so when I went and checked out, I, I had to make the joke uh, as I was purchasing it, and I finally said, well, as a former employee of Mavericks myself, I really don't care. Cause I don't. Uh, Mavericks has my support as far as local comic shops goes, but that's just because I've been there forever. My, one of my best friends in the world works there. And, you know, I, it's hard to not be, uh, in defense of it. Uh, that said, of course, I buy my comics through mail order, uh, in which I have to interact with no one. And it all works out. Uh, except that I get comics spoiled for me a uh, month in advance. Batman Incorporated number eight. Uh, so then afterwards we just drove because uh, we were starving. We were just trying to find some place to eat. Uh, during the, the car ride, Juliet had mentioned a place called the Blue Danube, which, uh, as it turns out, I have eaten at like four times in previous trips to space. Uh, and, and I just, I never knew the name of it, but like, as soon as she said it, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I've been there. And so we were just driving and we found it. And so I said, Hey, let's just, let's do this. So we did. And, uh, it was great. Uh, you know, just, uh, we, we sat around for it was probably an hour and a half. Uh, at least felt like that. Uh, but you know, just casual lunch. We were just chit chat and ate and had a good time. And then we, made the arduous trek back to Dayton. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. The trip to Columbus seems, uh, lengthier on the way back than it is to there. Uh, so anyway, so, uh, we parted ways and, and it was a good day. It was a great day. Uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't get the chance to leave my house a lot. And, uh, so when I do, I, I, uh, I am glad when it's not terrible, and it certainly was not terrible. 
Um, so it's now about 20 minutes in and I've been talking all by myself and I'm going to talk a little more because that's what I do's. Um, uh, so I read a comic, uh, and yeah, this is going to be a comic review. This is a filler episode and I feel I can do whatever the fuck I want. Uh, and that was very angry sounding. Very angry. Uh, so the next episode of Gutter Trash is going to be a movie episode. Jason picked the movie. Uh, if you listen to our previous episode, you know what it is. I'll remind you anyway, it is called The Master. Uh, the new, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. I think that's the guy. Eh, who cares? Uh, the guy that did Boogie Nights and whatnot. Uh, The Master, uh, his new movie, uh, newest movie. We're gonna review that, uh, next week when, when Jason and I, uh, have time. Uh, and then usually what happens is Jason picks a movie and then the next episode after that is a comic from me, uh, at least a comic that I pick. Uh, and so between uh, you know, before we watch the movie episode, I'll usually read whatever comic I'm going to pick, uh, before, you know, uh, we actually do that episode so that I can make that pick on the episode and then give him the comic when we're done, uh, so that he can read it, uh, unless, you know, it's something that we both own and, you know, I can wait, um, Luckily, with this break, though, I was able to, uh, you know, take my time reading, and I actually had kind of a hard time picking what the next book is going to be, uh, but, but I finally made a decision and I started reading it, um, but the thing is that I read it already, and... I don't think it's a good pick for gutter trash. So I am actually going to have to pick something else. Uh, uh, but I did read the comic I intended to pick. And so I'm kind of going to talk about it here. I'm going to give it my little review. Uh, I kind of wish Jason was here to review it with me. Uh, but I think he would, I don't know that he would hate it. Uh, I don't think he'd like it. Uh, and although, you know, he may enjoy it a lot. But I, I do honestly think it's not a great comic for, for the show. Uh, because it, it is an ongoing comic. Uh, the first trade paperback is out. Uh, I have the single issues. Uh, the trade collects issues one through five. And so I read the first five issues. Um, and, and that was what we were going to review. Um, unfortunately I read the five issues and just said to myself, that's it. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to pick it, uh, but I, I will talk about it now. Um, it's called Revival. It's, uh, an image comic by Tim Seeley and Mike Norton. Um, I think the ninth issue just came out recently. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I get my comics through mail order, so, uh, I am a month behind on everything. Uh, so I have up to issue eight and I read issues one through eight of revival in the past couple of days, uh, <laughs> because I kept reading it. Uh, obviously I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, but after the fifth issue, I kept reading it to hope that maybe issue six, issue seven, issue eight even would have like a good, not stopping point, but a point where it made logical sense to stop. Uh, I don't feel that issue one through five did. Uh, I don't think that it's, I really don't feel that that's a good trade paperback collection. Um... So what the story is, uh, like I can give you the Hollywood pitch, uh, the story is basically, um, it's Fargo with zombies, sort of, uh, 
it's not the zombies that you know from you know Night of the Living Dead or, or any of the Romero type Walking Dead stuff, but it is a story of the dead returning to life. Uh, it takes place in this uh, small Wisconsin town, uh, and it's never really explained. Uh, hasn't really we haven't seen the the origin of it yet at this point yet. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, one day in this small Wisconsin town, uh, the dead come back to life. Uh, but they're not brain eating zombies. They're people. Uh, and they, they're off, obviously, because they've been dead. Uh, but they're, but they've returned. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're sentient. They speak. They think. Uh, they, they behave mostly like normal people, uh, and, uh, some of them, you know, sort of return to the lives that they had, uh, but they, they also can't really be killed again, uh, and they seem to heal from most every major injury, uh, that they receive, um, uh, and, uh, so the story focuses on, uh, this, eh, it focuses on a lot of stuff. There's a, a large cast being built. Uh, and you know, quite honestly, like, I, I'm reading the book and it seems, uh, like a TV show. Uh, and not that that's a bad thing. Uh, it certainly isn't. Uh, uh, but, but it definitely feels like a, a show where the cast builds from, you know, episode to episode, and that's what's happening in this comic, where every issue or every couple of issues we we gain, uh, you know, access to to new characters and and see sort of sort of a bigger picture being drawn, um, and, and it's, but f- you know, for simplicity's sake, the story focuses around. A, uh, a squad of, of police, and again, this is a very small town in Wisconsin, uh, so it's just a couple of, you know, couple of officers, uh, and, uh, one of them, the sheriff's daughter, uh, gets assigned to the revival, uh, task force of sorts, uh, to investigate all the crimes, uh, that happen around people who were, you know, revived. Uh, never explicitly states how many people did actually return from the dead, uh, but we are meeting more than a few of them, uh, you know, as issues go by, um, and, uh, you know, in the cast of, of, you know, still living people, uh, and there's some bigger issues being, you know, presented within the story as well, such as, you know, how the rest of because again, this, uh, revival thing is only happening in this small town. So, you know, the rest of the United States and the rest of the world at large is like, you know, hanging on to this town to, to figure out what's happening. Is this going to happen to everyone else? You know, is this, you know, some sort of spiritual or religious thing that's happening? You know, is, you know, the dead returning to life? Is that, you know, something that, you know, could be, made from a biblical prophecy is it you know something that you know it's a scientific thing that you know could could you know help people throughout the years or uh you know help you know study certain diseases and and you know the the causes of death itself um you know and sort of you know there's also like political manipulation you know taking place and it's it's uh very dark and very intricate and you know it's also at times can be funny. Uh, and, and Tim Seeley and Mike Norton certainly, you know, uh, know how to put together a story like that. Uh, Tim Seeley, of course, is the, uh, writer of, writer creator of Hack Slash. Uh, Mike Norton is the artist of pff, fucking everything now. Uh, um, I'm serious. I think, uh, right now he is working on Revival. Uh, he's got his answer miniseries, which is uh, a thing that he's had in the works for a while. Uh, he's working on, uh, the Mike Allred, uh, Madman spinoff book, It Girl. Uh, he's got his weekly webcomic called Battle Pug. 
I believe he is doing layouts for Young Avengers and with uh, J.B. McKelvey. Uh, I, there's honestly not a goddamn thing that Mike Norton isn't doing right now. Uh, and that's great, because he's great and he deserves all that success. Uh, I mean, if you can call that success. You know, this, this is sort of the weird thing. Um, like, obviously, like, it's come to a point in his career where it seems like he has the ability to choose what he wants to do, and that's awesome, uh, cause, cause he's a super nice guy, and, uh, he, he's definitely very talented, uh, and he's, uh, you know, obviously made a lot of headway in his career, uh, and the fact that most of what he's doing is, you know, not only creator-owned work, but the stuff that isn't creator-owned work seems like things that he was, you know, hand-picked for, or he was able to just, you know, say, yeah, I want to do this, and able to do it. Uh, but at the same time, I gotta kind of wonder, you know, if there was exactly one thing that he could be drawing right now, you know, what would he choose? Uh, and, and again, I'm not saying that, that I, I certainly want to see more work by the guy, uh, you know, so I like the not only diverse but but you know large amount of output that he has right now uh but it just seems like you know if if maybe he was able if if any one of his books was allowed to be you know like a mega success you know what would he choose the one thing to work on the one thing to spend the most time on and not to split up his time uh it, it just seems almost unheard of for a comic book artist in this day and age to have a, such a wide variety of projects at the moment at one time. Uh, I mean, that is definitely something that you see from writers all the time, uh, because writing is not as much of a time-consuming process as drawing a comic is. Uh, but again, you know, fucking A, Mike Norton, go for it. Do, do whatever. I want to... You know, I'm a fan, I'm a supporter. Uh, I think your art is fantastic, and, and I love that I can see it in so many places, and, and you know, I do. Uh, you know, I'm currently buying the answer. I am, you know, while I'm not checking out the Battle Pug webcomic, I am getting the collections as they come out. You know, I'm getting It Girl, I'm getting Revival. You know, it's it's awesome. You know, keep it up. And yeah, I'm also getting Young Avengers, but probably not for long. Uh, that is another story. <clears throat> One that I'm not going to tell. So anyway, so Revival. Uh, I, I think it's a really good book. Uh, I think the appeal of this book, though, is that it is a continuing mystery, and it's building something, and when we're getting the answers slowly, and uh, but but the characters are great, the, the, the story is intriguing, the, the tone of it is, you know, pitch perfect. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely, if it was a superhero comic, uh, if it was from Marvel or DC, uh, it is something that I don't think I would have much interest in, but because it is the vision of these two guys, uh, you know, they, they are making it work and, and they're doing a, you know, fantastic job with it. Uh, but again, that, that, you know... That feeling of reading the first five issues and not feeling like it was something complete. And then I get it, it is an ongoing comic and, you know, it is supposed to make you want to pick up the next one, but I don't feel that just reading those five issues would do that. I honestly think it is an issue to issue type of comic, uh, that to make you feel that way. And I think reading it in that one big chunk, you know, the, the five issues and then, waiting another six months for another trade, uh, I think would work against Revival. Um, I mean, I'm sure, you know, both of those guys, you know, would love it if the single issues, you know, succeeded uh, in a way that uh, not a lot of comics uh, have the opportunity to anymore. Uh, but, you know, it's not that type of market uh, today. Uh, you know, so yeah, so, so that that's why... I'm not going to be picking this book for, for the show for an official review. Uh, you know, because, you know, yeah, it just kind of left me feeling like, well, there needs to be more. There, there wasn't, 
there wasn't a significant wrap up to any storylines presented in the first five issues, and there wasn't enough of a cliffhanger to make you want to continue on. Uh, and so I think as a trade, it, it just didn't work. Uh, but, but as single issues, I think it's, it's great. And, and uh, I've, I've certainly enjoyed reading, uh, the, the eight issues that I have right now. Uh, and wish that my comic order would uh, hurry the hell up and get here so that I can read the ninth soon. Um, so yeah, I, I do recommend revival, but I, I recommend it as a monthly comic and not as the trade. Uh, so go hunt that down, people. It's good. It's it's good stuff. Um, uh, I I wish there was something more I could say about it. Uh, but but you know it, it's noir. It's it's horror. Uh, there's certainly you know it, yeah, it's got a good sense of humor about itself too. You know, it's certainly not taking itself seriously. Uh, the art is. You know, it's that sort of, it's not realistic, but it's not cartoony, uh, but just sort of that perfect balance. Uh, you know, some might consider it like an old school type of style. Uh, like if I had to compare it to someone else, I would say Paul Pelletier or, you know, there's a little John Bernie kind of vibe to it. Uh, but, but it's clean. It's crisp. Uh, you know, and, and, and the horrific stuff comes and it's, it's, you know, perfectly done. Uh, there's this weird alien ghost demon baby thing that keeps showing up and hasn't really been explained, but it's intriguing nonetheless. Uh, you know, and just, you know, the entire story is just, it's, it's, it's all about the intrigue of it and wondering where it goes next. Uh, and I hope it can sustain that. Uh, maybe it's a thing where, like a TV show, you know, maybe like the first, you know, season of it, you know, like 12 issues, you know, maybe 20 issues, uh, who knows. Maybe that all reads better as a chunk. Uh, I mean, it certainly reads better as a chunk when you have multiple issues beyond the trade. Uh, you know, as, as I've devoured, you know, all of them in the past two, three days. Uh, but yeah, you know, just reading it in my head as a trade, it just didn't seem to work. So, so yeah, Revival, uh, I really, I really, do, really do recommend it. Uh, I am talking a lot. So yeah, so when Jason comes back and we watch our, our movie for the next episode, I am going to have to find something else now to read. Uh, I think I've got some ideas here and there. Um, so yeah, so, uh, I've gotta, I've gotta read another comic. Uh, which, you know, is not a bad thing. I should be reading more. Uh, even if it is them comic books. Them juvenile delinquent comic books. Um, so yeah. Uh, you know, and I've, I've watched some stuff. I'm probably going to watch a movie later tonight. Uh, I have uh, started watching The Rockford Files, uh, based on the continuing uh, recommendation. And I say this, uh, you know, just as a person who uh, reads a lot of things online, uh, of Matt Fraction. Obviously, he didn't recommend it to me personally because he is a famous comic book writer, and I am an idiot with a microphone. Ah, sorry, Joe. Uh, so yeah, that is how I've been spending my time. Uh, thank you for putting up with this. Holy shit, people. Oh my Christ. Um, listen, there's a podcast I listen to. It's called The 40 Year Old Boy. I've talked about it before. Uh, comedian Mike Schmidt. Uh, it is one of my favorite podcasts. It is him talking alone for sometimes three hours. And, I find it hilarious. I find that show to be great. Uh, at times, it's it's completely sad. I wrote a blog entry about it on my blog. You can go check that out. Uh, it's it's listening to his show is listening to the human experience in podcast form, and it's weird because I feel like that guy is like a close personal friend of mine. I have met him once uh, for two hours. 
Uh, but that guy tells you everything about his life, and it is hard to not come away from it thinking that you know him better than you know anyone else, maybe even your own family. Uh, but boy, that, that guy talks and talks and talks. And I've been doing this for 42 minutes now. And I, I don't know how you are standing this. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, I've got a little thing. Well, mostly I am doing this because I recorded some stuff at space. Uh, it is just, uh, inconsequential, stupid stuff, uh, with me and my phone. Um, but it's probably not even 10 minutes worth of stuff. So I wanted to go ahead and throw this at the end, but I also, you know, I, I did want to tell a little bit about my day. Cause again, I do stuff sometimes and, uh, I have to talk about it to you. Uh, and of course I wanted to talk to you about revival. So yeah, here's some, uh, some little things that I recorded, uh, while at the show today. Um, you know, take a listen, and I will uh, talk to you in just a few minutes. This is Eric, and I'm here with a uh, long-time listener, a uh, good friend of the show, Brian John Mitchell. Uh, we're at Space. Um, it's only been about a couple of hours since Space has been open, but uh, how's it been going? It's going great. I sold five comics to Jason Young. Sounds wonderful. Bye. Are you gonna record something? Yeah, yeah. Grab your beer. All right. You need another one too? Sure. All right. I'm gonna have to go about out and get more on that. You shouldn't have given one away to that guy. <laughs> he, he draws the comics for me for free, so you kind of have to. All right. He was telling me when he was a kid, his dad wrote Bridges on here. Nice. Should this be a story on your thing? Eh, it's recording, so. Okay. So, Eddie Delaney of comic making fame <laughs> said when, when he was four years old, his dad used to have him help him bottle his own home brews that his dad made. And I said, that's a good bonding experience. That's good for a father to teach his son a skill. Yeah. I uh, kind of wish uh, me and my dad had uh, something like that, you yeah. know. For sure. I've got dad issues. Who doesn't? It's true. I mean, I don't know that I have dad issues. Really? I mean, me and my dad, we don't talk. We don't get along. And that's pretty much... How can you have an issue? True. I mean, I wouldn't say we don't get along. I mean, we just don't have a need to communicate. Right. So, that, that's something. Sure. I'm sure if something happened and I needed to communicate with them. <laughs> You know. So uh, we are about to have. Uh, I'm on my third beer. You are on your second, and uh, I'm not even here today. <laughs> what? You're not here today? Yeah. That's true. Uh, so uh, cheers. I hope the cheers came out. Here, wait. Try it again. So I'm here at Space with uh, Jason Young, who has a table here. Uh, I've never met him before. Uh, <laughs> he's about to tell me a story about a hand mirror. Uh, yeah, I have a hand mirror here with all my comics for some reason. And the reason is because my roommate, Doogie, is working at Cedar Point right now for like a three-week stretch. And um, also working with him is a local uh, aspiring cartoonist named Avery Winnings. Avery just printed up one of his comics, and he's going to bring it to Space here to sell. And Doogie got wind of that, and he called me at home yesterday and said, Hey, when Avery comes uh, to get, you know, table space, can you give him, Can you bring my hand mirror from home and give it to him <laughs> so he can bring it back to Cedar Point so I can cut my hair while we're not walk, walking around comparing cracks on roller coasters? And I said, That is the weirdest thing I've ever been asked. So, yes. <laughs> and that's why I have a hand mirror. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and he couldn't just buy a two dollar hand mirror or go to the bathroom. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. I never even thought of that. <laughs> it's a, maybe it's a special hand mirror. It's imbued with powers. <laughs> I love Pat Kane, but he's kind of a thug. 
so uh, I'm stealing something from our friend Kurt Dins, who uh, does this for us on occasion, but uh, I'm at Space uh, 2013 in Columbus, Ohio with Nate Powell, and he is going to ask uh, one of our dumb questions. Okay. Oh, I'm asking my own question and then answering uh, it? Yeah, All right. Yeah. Okay, so my first job, if you don't count, like, mowing the lawn, publishing comics on a photocopier under cover of night, I was working at KB Toy Store in the mall in North Little Rock, Arkansas, and I wound up getting the job. Like, it was it's the only one I applied to, so I walked up to the manager. Her name was Cookie. And uh, I was like, I'm looking for a job. And so we went out into the little mall walkway and sat on a bench. And the interview consisted of this. She just sat down and said, tell me your life story. And for some reason, I broke into like a prairie country song. And uh, I only got as far as, I was raised on a farm in uh, South that, Dakota. And then she, she broke me off. I was like, that's it, you're hired. <laughs> And so ever since then, I've just had this, uh, you know, like, unfortunately, new view of how easy it is to get a job. I just sort of set the precedent from 1996 to today. That's awesome. There it is. Thank you. So I'm here at Space with uh, Brian John Mitchell, owner-operator of Silver Media, and uh, he is going to answer one of our dumb questions. Uh, the question was, what did I have for breakfast this morning? The answer is, I had some trail mix and a beer with Eric Schonborn. Thank you very much. So, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I had uh, a very awkward and uncomfortable time doing this. Uh, but at the same time, I fucking love the sound of my own voice. I think I'm hilarious, folks. And I hope that uh, you uh, endured this uh, without much uh, suffering. Uh, thanks for putting up with me. Uh, thanks for putting up with this. Uh, I just uh, didn't feel right to not put an episode out. It's been a while since we just uh, skipped a week. Uh, so I thought uh, something needed to be done, when in reality, probably nothing needed to be done at all. Uh, we will be back uh, next week with uh, a regular episode, uh, me and Jason here in the same room together, uh, talking about uh, the new movie, or not the new movie, but uh, well, new to us, uh, but talking about the movie The Master. So uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, thanks, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>